So thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who I don't know, my name is Maggie Palmer and I'm the founder of a company called Pep Talk Her. We are on a mission to close the gender pay gap. And you may or may not know Molly from Negotiate This, who I love. Molly, thanks for joining us. Do you want to give us a quick intro to you and why you started um, Negotiate This? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Maggie. Um, I'm the creator of Negotiate This. Molly here. Uh, nice to see everybody. Um, I hang out on Instagram a lot uh, at Negotiate This. I also have a blog, negotiatethis.org. Just started recently, starting out on LinkedIn as well. I'm passionate about negotiation and honest career conversations. And it really stemmed out of me figuring out that first I was underpaid. And secondly, that I didn't know that I could negotiate my way up from that stance. So ever since then, I've been on a mission to make sure everybody else knows that they can negotiate too. So that's where I hang out a lot. Very cool. So we would love to know from you what challenges are coming up for you right now. Let us know in the chat um, and let me know where you're joining us from today. I am in New York City. Um, so hello to anyone else in Manhattan. Molly, where are you joining us from today? Chicago, cold Chicago. It's freezing where we are. So we're very jealous if you are in a hot part of America. <laughs> but we would love to know what challenge. Oh, my gosh. Natalie's in Florida. That's really way to rub it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very jealous of that, that summer heat. Um, so listen, let us know what challenges are coming up for you right now. Possibly one of the reasons you might have joined today's conversation is because of inflation. So you've probably been hearing all the chatter in the news about how the rate of inflation is quite high right now, right? And it seems to only be going up. So what we know is when it comes to our salary, when inflation is high, it means that the money that we're earning doesn't buy as much cool stuff as it once did, right? So the cost of rent, the cost of gas, the cost of a Coca-Cola, a loaf of milk, uh, sorry, a loaf of bread or a carton of milk, everything's going up. So this is a great uh, reason um, for you to really seriously consider asking for a pay raise. And I want you to be asking for salary every single year, but um, inflation can be a great incentive for people to think quite seriously about asking and negotiating for a pay raise. Are you hearing this a lot from your community right now, Molly? Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Um, and it's all over the news. And there are some different strategies that, I mean, we've both talked about and I've written a little bit about, about kind of navigating that conversation about inflation and just negotiating from there. Um, something that I've kind of opened up a little bit is maybe not walking into your boss and saying, hey, inflation's seven and a half percent. I should be getting that plus more, plus all the value that I've provided. I mean, there are different ways that you can go about it. Um, not to say that that will never work because there are times and places where that could very much be a necessary conversation. Um, but kind of how I've written about and posted about navigating that conversation is to first focus on the value that you've provided uh, and then go from there, just like you would every other conversation. Um, I've seen some people kind of compare it to um, when you find out maybe a coworker is paid more than you. Mm -hmm. You don't just initially walk into your boss and say, hey, I found out that Joe was paid 10,000 more than me and I should be getting right. that too, right? Yeah. You kind of navigate it very strategically. And it's the same way with, with inflation as well. And it's such a great point. So when you are negotiating, you want to think quite strategically. So one of the things that we know is that unfortunately, women are penalized to a greater degree than men when we do negotiate, right? So there are unconscious bias and um, unconscious parts of discrimination that actually come into how we are perceived when we negotiate. So this doesn't mean that we shouldn't negotiate. It just means that, you know, you really need to prepare in advance how you're strategically going to go about that. So to Molly's point, taking in successes and data points as to what you've achieved and how you've contributed to the business. This is a really strong starting point to start a negotiation. So you may not want to walk in and say, hey, inflation's going bananas. I need a raise. But you might want to walk in and say, hey, as you know, I took over managing our social media this year. Our engagement is up 15 percent which has contributed to a 4% increase in our online sales since I started this role. 
That has added $30,000 to the business bottom line. So I would love to talk to you about how we can structure my compensation going forward to really reflect the increased value that I'm bringing to the company. So the reason you might be asking for a raise is because of inflation, but what you're actually highlighting is this is how I'm tangibly making you more money. This is how I'm making your life easier. This is how I'm better leading the team, right? So bosses are people too, right? And we need to put ourselves into our boss's shoes when we are negotiating. That's something that's really, really important to think about what's their perspective on all of this. Um, and you want to take that into account. So one of the things I always say to people is, if your boss is going through a divorce and you know that they're filing the paperwork on Friday, maybe don't maybe don't take that scheduled meeting on a Friday. Maybe move that in the calendar. Maybe push it back a week or two. You know, like you've got to take into account personalities, whether there's been some um, annual results that have just come out that weren't very favorable. You may want to consider moving the time of your negotiation conversation based on those external factors too. So you want to kind of read the room. That's something that's really important. Is that what you talk about um, a lot as well, Molly? Yeah, I love how you brought up uh, putting like focusing on the data, the numbers. Like if you can quantify it and put in like, hey, I saved us 12% or I brought on this new client and I got us this deal, like that really helps. Like people always respond to numbers like Maggie was saying, and something that I've been focusing on a lot lately or that I've been hearing as well is that we need to look at the relationship between our, like usually you're, you're negotiating with your boss or your manager and just keeping in mind that you're, you have a relationship with them and you're going to have a relationship with them afterwards. So you want to keep that in mind. And it's not like, Hey, I need this now. It's, this is what I provide. You um, you have a relationship and you want to gain from your side and they want, probably want you to stay as well. So I like thinking of that as well. No, that's so true. And one of the things we always say is you want to approach um, a negotiation really with a long time frame in mind, almost as though you're entering into a marriage of sorts, right? Because, you know, you can go in and you can screw the other party out of a heap of cash right now. But you need to appreciate the way that you go about that negotiation potentially could impact that relationship um, over, the, over the long term. I have um, one of our um, facilitators at Pep Talk Her. He was the chief negotiator for JLo and A Rod. And um, RIP JLo and A Rod, but like in the, in the former iteration when they were together. And he talked about how sometimes they would go into large negotiations with huge companies, and I won't name names, but huge companies doing massive deals, right? And he said, sometimes we would leave value on the table. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, sometimes they would think we were gonna ask for X million and we would actually only ask for this many million. And I said to him, I was like, why? And he's like, because instead of a three-year deal, we'd then get a five-year deal, right? Or instead of this, we'd get that. And in the long term, that was better for the business and for the overall brand. You know, so it's very interesting, even hearing from people at the very top of their game, sometimes intentionally they leave money on the table because they know that by strengthening that relationship and by delighting the other party in the long run, it will come back to benefit them for the better. Um, but there's just merit in kind of thinking about that, you know, and it's, it's a tough balance, but it is important. And one of the things um, that we built at Pep Talk Her is an app, right? To help specifically you be able to track your successes. It's totally free. It's called Pep Talk Her. You can check it out on all the app stores. And what it does is it'll be like, Molly, what's up? What are you really proud of this week? And Molly might be like, well, you know, I, you know, worked with this many clients or whatever the case may be, right? And those, um, those data points are super, super valuable. So you want to be tracking those data points throughout the year. So you can prepare for your salary conversation the night before, and that's okay, but it's much more powerful if you're preparing for that throughout the whole year. Because here's, here's a quick example. So Molly, like, do you know what you had for dinner, say like last Wednesday, for example? Can you remember? Uh, no, I cannot even remember what I had last night. <laughs> I know. I don't even know what I had for lunch on the weekend. I'm like, wait, what? What did I eat? So like, of course, we don't remember all of the little details in life because why would we? But then if you think about that, like, do you know what you did in your career in October, in June, in February 2021? Like, 
there's a lot that's happened. And so the purpose of the app is to help you track that and recall those important pieces of information when it really matters, right? So when you're in that salary negotiation with your boss, you can then say, as you'll recall, in April, I introduced us to the Coca-Cola client. You'll recall in June, I hired two of the interns. Um, in September, we had that great piece of feedback from the chief financial officer, boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden your boss is like, yeah, actually Molly had a good year. They did, I forgot about that. You know, like, so we kind of want to be able to jog their memory so that it's a lot easier for them to accept our um, arguments, so to speak, as to why we deserve more money or a higher title. Um, so I want to hear from you, now, um, you, Molly, on your experiences of this, but quickly let us know in the chat what negotiations you've got coming up so that we can help you brainstorm ahead of time. But Molly, what's worked really well for you when you've been negotiating in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, just to touch on what you just said too, Maggie, like when you have those specific pieces of information that you've, you have in just one spot, you can look back on what you did a month ago, two months ago, 10 months ago, um, you have those specific pieces of information. So you know them and you might have people that helped you like, or gave you that feedback or, um, people that were part of the process. So you can even take those tidbits and those pieces of information that you saved and you can say hey um remember this person in accounting they said that this was the best presentation that they'd had seen this this quarter and you can take that specific piece of information that you would probably forget and maybe it's a decision maker who said that to you and you can kind of leverage that in those conversations too so i absolutely love that of tracking your work wins keeping it all yeah. in one spot so that you can yeah. bring it up when it counts and like yeah. to answer your question i mean that's part of it like you have um you have i had specific ways that i showed value like i was you know a top performer um i and i demonstrated that so i think that that sometimes can be the caveat too i mean there are a lot of hard workers in a lot of yes. spaces and a lot of industries but if nobody knows that if your boss doesn't know that if a decision maker doesn't know that then it just, I mean, of course it counts, but it's, they, they just don't know it. So I think yeah. that, that that was a question that's come up as well. Um, you, they need to know it. You need to show your value. We can't expect our bosses, our managers, everybody above us to know all of the amazing things that we're doing. We have to show them, we have to tell them and hopefully on a regular basis, not just like at the annual review time, totally. we want them to know it ongoing. Uh, and Maggie, this was a question that I got actually in another session. Like, how do we uh, yeah. let our let the decision makers or our coaches, our bosses, how do we let them know on an ongoing basis of our good work? Um, and I mean, we had a yeah. couple of ideas that we brainstormed, but I would love your feedback too. It's a great question, Molly, because you know, it's the same, to to your point. It's like. Unless you're JLo or Oprah, you probably don't have your own publicist. I don't. I don't know if you if you do, Molly, but I certainly don't. So you're on your way. You, yeah, yeah, maybe one day. So if you don't have your own publicist, who's doing your PR? You know, and I'm not talking about like the PR that's getting you in Time Magazine or CNN. I'm talking about the PR that means that your boss's boss knows that you're a valuable contributor, that people on the executive know your name and they've kind of seen you around the place. They've heard you mentioned, right? Like you've got to be doing your own PR because sadly no one else is going to do it for you, right? Unless you're going to hire a publicist. So you've, and, and you know, like to Molly's point as well, like if no one knows about it, did it even happen? If you worked, you know, an 80 hour week to get that deal done in time so that you didn't lose that client, if no one knows that you did that, I'm not really sure if it's going to be that helpful for you when it comes to promotional pay raise time. So there are ways that you can raise it in a way that's going to feel authentic and not awkward, right? Because some of us are like, oh, I don't want to be the center of attention. I don't, I don't want to toot my own horn, etc. So there's a great technique that I like to call the FYI only email. So the FYI only email. So this is an email that I recommend you send every two to four weeks ish. So you can go ahead if you want and open up your calendar and just create a little calendar situation, like a little note in your calendar and just set it to recur every two to four weeks. It's up to you. And in that email, if Molly was my boss, this is what I would say. I might say, Hey Molly, hope you're excited for the Super Bowl tonight. I've got the chicken drumsticks ready at home. Uh, just keeping you posted. 
As discussed, Sally has been let go. Her last day is on Friday. There's no hard feelings. Um, HR are handling it. Um, we have onboarded the new banking client. I'm really excited. This is a $300,000 deal. Um, the team's in place. It's going to be a wonderful long-term partnership. I can feel it now. Um, we do need to hire a new art director. I've got three interviews happening um, and we expect to have that position um, you know, onboarded by the end of March. Um, really looking forward to the team meeting on Monday. Holler if anything comes up and look forward to seeing you then. Whatever. So it's just like chatty, chatty, chatty. It's not like, dear Molly, I am amazing. Here is why. But it's kind of like, hey, douche, douche, douche. This is pretty cool. This is kind of interesting. You know, maybe you want to say, hey, you know, Ruth from the executive team gave me some feedback that this week. We've taken it on board. She's really happy. Um, I hope you are too with the changes. You know, anything like that. So, but you also want to be, also you'll notice I, I mentioned the Super Bowl at the start, right? You're wanting to build a relationship as well because whether it's fair or not, the reality is that people like to do business with people that they like and with people that they feel a connection with. You don't have to be best friends with your work colleagues. That's fine. You don't have to be. But if you know their son's graduating from college on Friday, why not send them a Slack message and say, hey, you must be so proud. Congratulations. If you know that they're a Rams fan and you know that the Rams are playing, why not send them a message and just say, hey, I'll be thinking of you on the weekend. As you know, sport, not my jam, but like, I know it's a big deal in your family. So good luck, whatever. You want to be, you want to be starting to form these little relationships, right? It just all goes towards trust and um, an easier, frankly, conversation for when it's a tougher conversation about a promotion or a salary increase. By sending those regular FYI only emails, your boss has on the record the stuff that you're pretty proud of. If they've got a problem with what you're doing, it also gives them the opportunity to say, hey, Molly, I've already hired the new art director. Please cancel those interviews. It's already under control. Fine. At least we've troubleshot that problem and it's, and it's under control now, right? Like better to find out now than down the track. So you can use that as an opportunity to just make sure that you're on the right track. And they might say, oh my gosh, I didn't even know the banking client had confirmed. That's remarkable. I'm actually going to let the head of sales know this is a huge achievement. You know, it kind of gives them a little bit of ammunition for them to use in terms of their um, performance reviews up the food chain as well within the business. And it puts on notice and on record that you are contributing a lot. So then at the end of the year, if you're sending this email once a month, say, you've got 12 data points throughout the year where your boss is very conscious and aware of the contribution that you've been making. So it means that you've kind of done some of the groundwork around why you deserve a raise before you even go in there to ask. Um, so we found that that's crucial, Molly, um, to getting that success before you even walk into the negotiation table. I love that. And it feels a little bit low key and low pressure too, if it's an email, right? And I mean, right. a lot of people aren't even in the workplace anymore. So it's kind of, kind of is that just like quick email right off the bat. Um, and I just- right read a little something recently and it said um negotiation is at the minimum maintaining your relationship and in the very best cases it is improving your relationship so right. you i mean it's all about the relationship especially when we're talking about career like when you're in your career you're going to be around those people if it's a recruiter if it's a manager that's hiring you even yeah. if you don't work with the recruiter besides your onboarding and recruiting time, I mean, they still have very direct access to the company. So you always want to be building and thinking of that relationship um, all throughout the process before, during, after. And, you know, relationships are important and they've never been more important than now. You know, the reality is with remote working, work from home, it's a lot harder to go for lunch, to grab a coffee, to run into someone while you're making a tea in the kitchen. That doesn't happen now. So you have to manufacture those opportunities. You have to, because if you do that, you're going to be in such a stronger position than your colleagues who don't. Then your colleagues who say, oh, it's too hard to get to know the new boss because it's remote, so I just won't even bother. That's fine. But then when they walk into that conversation asking for a raise or promotion, it's going to be that little bit more awkward as opposed to you who knows that they're a Rams fan, who knows that the boss's twins graduated from college and you've kind of got a bit of a rapport already, right? And it's important that you develop that relationship, right? Because it just means that having these conversations 
is that little bit easier. You'll feel more confident. You'll be less anxious. They feel like they know you. You feel like you know them and can understand them and what they're looking for as well, right? So it's very important in um, COVID work from home times to find ways to build connection, human connection with your colleagues and your bosses. You know, and, and indeed with people outside of your specific team as well. One of the things, Molly, that you know from when you're looking to negotiate um, title or salary, if you've got alternatives, you have a much stronger bargaining position from which you can negotiate, right? If you have alternatives. And so having strong networks throughout the business, up, down, sideways is very powerful. The reason is we want these people to be mentioning your name in rooms or Zooms that you're not in, right? I want people to be putting you forward for opportunities, to be asking for you to join their team, to go on secondment, right? Because you're just one person. So there's only so much lobbying and leverage um, that you can do in relationship building that you can do on your own. If you've got other people who know what you're passionate about and who know what areas of the business you have an interest in, then they can be lobbying for you too and looking out for opportunities for you as well, right, Molly? Yeah. And I think that that speaks volumes to be vocal, like be vocal to your colleagues about things that you've done, be vocal to um, the people above you who you're working, who manage you. Um, You just want to talk about what you want, where you want to go, what you've done, some solutions you have, some ideas, um, another big piece of negotiation and um, drop some questions in the chat. If you have them, we'd love to get to those too. If you have specific um, ideas or areas that you want us to touch on. Um, where would they go in with that? I can't remember. I'll come back to it though. Speaking of relationship though, I think that one thing that we can often overlook is that we or you in your negotiation, you are a huge part of that relationship. I think we just think of like, oh, I have to get the boss to like me because I need this. I need to get this salary or this position or this raise. And I think one thing that's been really um, on the platform right now is that employees have huge, a huge amount of power. They have a huge amount of leverage right now um, with the great resignation, with um, people wanting more people in certain industries and companies. So I think just being mindful of that. And I think that that can really help even like your confidence and how you feel about walking into that negotiation. You're the other half of that relationship. And it's not unlikely that your boss wants you to stay, that they want you to be happy and what can get you there, what can um, help you be a happy, content worker who has what they want or is um, has the things, the tools that they need to get where they're going. So I think that that's a really important aspect to keep in mind and that we often forget. It's like we're just kind of like coddling this relationship so that we can get to the next part. No, it, it goes both ways. So step into it confidently so that you can get your needs fulfilled as well um, because you're a big asset to wherever you work. And I think the other thing, Molly, you know, it's, you, you raise such a good point. I think a lot of us think that negotiation is for lawyers and negotiation is for professionals. Um, and let me know, let, let us know in the chat. If I said to you all, you have to go in and negotiate for your salary in 20 minutes. If I said, Alfred, Amanda, Marilena, Natalie, Tammy, Tari, you got 20 minutes and you're gonna go and negotiate for your salary. Let me know in the chat, like what's one word that comes up for you? Like, how does that make you feel? Let me know in the chat. And Molly, like what comes up for you? If I said you gotta do a snap negotiation, like what? how does that make you feel viscerally? I think just going back to like my roots and my initial feeling of negotiation when I didn't know what to do, the first word that comes to my head is vomit. I'm going to vomit. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Do they like me enough? You know, what about you, Maggie? Yeah, I think so, right? Like hives, you know, like breaking out in a rash. (laughs) Marilina's saying she feels stressed. Natalie's nervous. Totally anxiety comes up a lot. Um, I need a month to prepare and, and no shame in that, by the way, Tara, like, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, like that shows me that you are very prepared and that in fact, you're probably an excellent negotiator because you understand the value of preparation, which we can chat to, about in a minute. Um, because, you know, one of the things that's I think really important and I know Molly and I would love everyone to walk away with today remembering is that negotiation doesn't have to be stressful. It actually doesn't. It's actually not a fight. It's not meant to be combative. You know, it's not a war that you're walking into, even though we often feel like, oh, 
walking into a war zone. Um, it doesn't have to be like that because if you look at the technical definition, technically a negotiation is just a discussion. It's two parties, sometimes more, but in most of us it's two parties trying to find an agreement. It's a discussion. It's not a fight. It's really not. Like ultimately that's what it is. And so this is why Molly and I are really passionate about you getting to know your boss and your colleagues at a personal level because it takes some of the stress and some of those nerves and vomit feelings out of it. And it makes it more just a chat with someone who you respect and who hopefully respects you, right? Because when you can come at a negotiation from that perspective, you're calmer, you're more relaxed, you're less likely to be going bright red or whatever, and you're gonna get a better outcome, right? So I think reframing the, the, the intent behind negotiation is really powerful. Yeah, I love that, Maggie, it is. And I think that that was like one of the big game changers for me too. Like realizing that what I wanted to get out of it was equally, it, I mean, it's just equally as important as what we give to the company as well and where we want to go. Yeah, absolutely. Keep your questions coming. Thank you so much um, for sending these questions through. Um, we're going to take a look at these. Yes, you can absolutely catch up on the recording. We're going to send that to you afterwards. You can also, we're running, um, a more in-depth challenge next week, specifically focused on this. So I will send that through to you as well. Um, so that you'll have access to that. Um, but Molly, I want, let's jump in on Tammy's question. Do you want to quickly jump in? And then I'm going to jump in off the back of that as well with some thoughts for Tammy. Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly read through it. And if you have a situation coming up, let us know. One of the most important things, which I think Tari has already pointed to, is preparation. Uh, sorry, Marilena has pointed to that. Taking the time to prepare before a negotiation is never a bad idea. If you want a $100 pay rise, pretty sure you've got this and you don't really need to prepare that much. But if you're thinking about a $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 pay raise or more, you've got to put in the time and effort ahead of time to prepare for that. Um, with with the Tammy's uh, situation of just like giving the um, hiring the manager, it looks like the manager, Tammy said, um, the initial conversation of what yeah. you were looking for, I think is really important. And that they said that they could work with that is a huge um, like piece of leverage that you can definitely work with. So if they um, initially accepted saying, okay, we can work with that. I would, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that that's a really good sign. And I think that that's like a green light that it's okay to push for what you want. So, right. um, yeah, so then they, but you know, yeah. So basically that's what they said, but then they come back with like, a, oh, this is the best that I could do. Do you kind of like, well, you said it was this amount, but now you're saying, oh, this is the best that we can do. But, you know, I'm just trying to see what's kind of like reasonable. If yeah, they and said I, it and then came back, you know? Yeah. I mean, if they initially said that it was reasonable, I mean, I, I mean, there are lots of things that could be happening in the background. Was it a lack mm -hmm. of communication? Did somebody mm -hmm. just not know? Um, mm -hmm. But like, I would return to that conversation. Um, that I've, I've done in the past as well saying, okay, mm -hmm. in our initial conversations, we said that this was like the range that I was looking for. And based on the mm -hmm. experience that I come in with yeah. and th th this different value that I will provide to the um, company or the position, um, this is mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Is that a possible, or how can we make this work? So this will fit, I think is, is acceptable because they could, um, that could be within their range and that right. you can even open it up, um, to say what is the range that we can do in this position yeah and, and, and you can and me. you can ask yeah. them too and, mm -hmm. and have, has that taken place yeah it has he said the range the high was 85 yeah, so, what would you add? yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead molly sorry oh i was just gonna ask what you would add maggie i'd love your expertise too well, I think you mentioned that they're pushing for 90K. Mm -hmm. um, basically, every recruiter um, and manager, typically 90% of them expect that you will negotiate. 
So right. all of these things are within context. If you are mm -hmm. currently unemployed, if you need this job in order to put food on the table and pay your rent, it's a slightly right. different calculation it than is. if you have a job right now that you're pretty happy with, you know, mm -hmm. you then have more leverage. So any yeah. of this advice, obviously take with a grain of salt, given your situation, mm -hmm. because yeah. it's all dependent, right? However, mm -hmm. In an ideal world, if you do have the capacity to kind of play a little bit of hardball, shall we say, um, <laughs> you know, you can use language and say, listen, given um, given the KPIs required for this role and given my seniority and experience, it's my expectation that the offer will be north of $90,000. I'd really appreciate you talking to the manager to see what we can do to get closer to that figure I'm really looking for. So. You're not saying no, piss off with your low offer, um, but you know, you're also kind of framing it in a way that's really positive and that's collegiate. So you wanna be solutions focused, right? Mm -hmm. And if they come back and if they say, listen, 85 is the number, is the number, is the number, yeah. you can say, look, that's a little lower than what I was expecting. I'm very interested in this role. Could we put in the contract that we reconsider my salary after three months or we renegotiate mm -hmm. after three months or after six months? The other thing you can think about as well, Tammy, and we talk about this a lot in the career challenge is um, non-monetary benefits. So what else is important to you? Like I used to always, I used to always negotiate for eight weeks of paid time off when I was a reporter. So mm -hmm. I would always get eight weeks of PTO. You know, that was important to me. So I would negotiate for more paid leave. If the salary wasn't what I wanted, I'd be like, okay, well, would you be open to eight weeks leave instead of the typical six weeks? And normally they'd say, yeah, that's fine. We can do that off the books, no problem. Or maybe they'll give you a higher signing on bonus if you're leaving mm -hmm. equity or bonus on the table where you are in your existing job. So thinking outside the square, so you've got alternatives in case mm -hmm. they say 85 is our final offer and in case you really, really want it. Then you can say, okay, listen, I can work with that. Could we discuss the other benefits involved in this role? Healthcare, 401k, signing bonus, equity, um, you know, sales incentives, et cetera, et cetera, depending on your role. Okay. Thank you for that. Of course. I'll pop a um, resource in the chat that might be helpful for you as well, Tammy. Thanks. I think we've got some other questions coming through as well, do we, Molly? Yeah, we have a few. Um, how can you negotiate a salary with a new manager for a new job? Uh, so I'm guessing that it's at your current company, at your current job, and there's been a new uh, manager at your current company. So I think it goes back to relationship building, getting to know this person, getting to know, um, a little bit who they are and where you're coming from, like, let them know your side of the relationship, uh, where you've been in the company, where you're looking to go. And if there's other people who have a little bit of the background on your track and where you were going, I would definitely loop them in. If there's another person, um, that is maybe like the same ranking as that person to have them vouch for you or even another colleague but um and it's specifically looking at a salary with a new manager for a new job so it sounds like the whole thing is new so shoot your shot i mean um if there's a background or uh, this position is brand new you have a wide open space to kind of look at the market look what other companies um pay this type of a role um, and feel free to add specific details into um, if you have more specifics in that scenario too and we'd love to respond to that and there's a great question here as well from a manager who has a team member who's not being paid the market rate um, given that their experience is done that they're, they're going really well so actually they're probably due for a pay raise so I can speak to my experience on this. Back when I was a junior reporter, I actually had a boss who sounds like they're a bit of a legend like you. And my boss was like, hey, Maggie, you should really ask me for a pay raise, like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I was a bit oblivious. I was like, what? She was like, no, you really need to ask for a salary increase. And I was like, oh, so she kind of set me up. She kind of gave me the off the record make sure you ask. And then I went in and asked. So that was really helpful. So I would say if you can kind of coach this person on or off the record, that's always really helpful. And then the other thing is as a manager, when you're advocating for raises for people on your team, having data to support that. So you can go to them and say, Hey, listen, I'm going to advocate for you to get promoted and to move up within the band or to have a bump in salary. Can you come back to me with some clear data points and some quantifiable projects you've worked on? 
skills you've grown, ways you've added value to the business, let me know. And then you can actually get them to do some of the groundwork for you so that you can use that data to run up the food chain. Because I understand that often you've got to get it approved by your boss's boss's boss, et cetera. Right. So you do need those data points as well. Um, some companies will have a pay equity policy potentially, or there will be a very clear band structure in place. Um, when that's the case, it's a lot easier because you can just say to HR or finance, listen, they were doing this, now they're this, so we need to increase them to here. Some companies don't have that. Smaller companies, often it's a little bit more nebulous, a bit more of a gray area, so it's a little harder. But I do want to say um, that people like you um, are so valuable and having allies in the workplace who um, advocate and negotiate on behalf of people who are being underpaid, we know that the pay gap um, impacts women disproportionately and we know that it's much worse for people of colour, right? And so I do believe that all of us have a, have a role to play as allies um, so that we can try and nip some of this inequality in the bud as soon as we can. Um, so I want to thank you for the work that you're doing and even the fact that you're thinking about this. Um, I'll pop a link in the chat as well. Equally, if there's any of your colleagues, you can, you know, you can send them to the resources that, that, that um, Molly and I have as well that are free that might help them as well. Um, feel free to circulate that to your colleagues if you think that would help them as well. Yeah, I love that too. I love that question um, because as as you are, and as Maggie said, we're all change agents. And especially if you're a decision maker, you can make so much positive change because we all know that so many people are in that position. Um, and it sounds like in a lot of situations, there aren't those structured pay bans. And that's when people can really fall to the bottom of like, inequitable pay. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to be a decision maker to be a change agent. You can, you can be a colleague, you can be an employee, you can say, hey, guess what? I'm being paid this. Um, like to Maggie's point, you don't have to be the boss. You don't have to be the manager of people. You can just be um, the colleague sitting next to them that totally. nudges them. I think that those conversations yeah. are so important, but that's amazing work that you're doing advocating as well. I love your point, Molly. We can all be change agents and it's so true. Um, and we would love to hear what you've learned from today's session as well. Let Molly and I know she's on Instagram at negotiate this. I am at pep talk her. I'm on Instagram as well. Molly, you're more IG, aren't you? Than LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm an Instagram person. <laughs> I'm trying to get into LinkedIn though. Yeah. Well, do say hi. I'm on LinkedIn. So do say hi, let me know. And then tag Molly and I pop something on your stories about what you've learned from today's session tag us and let us know and then send us a DM if we can do anything to help support you, you know, beyond today's session. We're going to circulate a replay from today so that you can check that out as well and send that to any friends or family. But if you've got any final questions, pop them in the chat and let us know. Um, but Molly, any words of wisdom from you before? I just want to be respectful of everyone's time before we wrap up today. Words of wisdom. Mm, I love this. This is like the big finale. I have, I have a lot um, that I like to post on every day on my Instagram. So <laughs> check out some words of wisdom there, everybody. I'm sure a lot of you maybe um, found this talk from there. Um, but I would say maybe the most recent is kind of look at all of the value that you provide. I think that that was a big motivator for me to really feel good about negotiating and feel good about where I was coming from. Um, and what Maggie and I talk about all the time is like track it, like keep track of those work wins because you provide so much value. Truly. And often we think that maybe we don't have that much value and we're like, oh, I'm just doing my job. But like, here's the thing, your job has value. And if you were bad at your job, you would be fired. If you haven't been fired, 10 points, that's good news. And it means that you're probably pretty good. Right. So you are within your rights to track the value that you bring and to ask for a raise, you know, if your performance warrants it. I do think you should be asking for a raise every year, especially this year, given the rate of inflation. Um, so, so yeah, keep that in the back of your mind. Track the success and the value that you bring and don't be afraid to have a conversation with your boss about that. Um, but Molly, this has been such a treat and thank you to everyone for joining us. If you've got a final question, you can let us know. But otherwise, I've popped Molly's Instagram in the chat. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, we would so love to stay in touch. If you've got social media or you want to connect on LinkedIn, pop your link in the chat too. Um, 
It's such a pleasure to meet you all. And we really hope that you can um, get more value from today's session and also the free resources that negotiate this and pep talk her um, share as well. We are kind of nerds and we're always on social media, right, Molly? So do send us a note and let us know if you've got further questions as well. And and join the um, join our free career challenge next week. I've popped the link in the chat for you as well. Um, it's going to be really fun. We're going to be doing a daily call like this every single day for five days um, to help you really know your worth so that you can negotiate for it this year. Um, Molly, it's such a treat to see you. I'm obsessed with Negotiate This, so I'm glad we got the chance to, to partner together. Yeah, likewise, Maggie. I'm always on your Instagram seeing what you post. Um, Maggie's the best. She's like my idol in the negotiation world. So this was a really great chat and I'm glad everybody got to join. Uh, it's been great. It's been awesome. Such a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Listen, have a wonderful evening or day if you're joining us from the other side of the world and we will speak to you all soon. Thanks, y'all. Bye.